Shortly after we moved onto the boat, we brought the RV here to the KOA in Fort Lauderdale while we go through the last few remaining things to see what should stay and what we should sell. Now, while we're here, I thought Jason promised to do a battery monitoring kit video a while back and he still has not done that. So, he should do that today. Hey Jason. Yep. Uh, you want to tell us about that battery monitoring kit? Right now? <laughs> well, if you don't do it now, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Can I at least unload this first? Please? You, you promised everybody. All right. It's right, it's like right <laughs> there. It is right there, okay. All right, yeah, twist my arm. All right, let's do this. Let me move this stuff. Why is the battery monitoring kit so important? I did say in one of the previous solar videos that it's the most important part or piece of the solar puzzle. I still think that's true, but it's also really important to understand how much battery power you need and how much battery power you consume. As Nikki pointed out earlier, it is just this little tiny device here. It's not expensive. It's not that difficult to install. And it also comes with a shunt, which is deep in here. Let me try to show it to you. That's it, that's the shunt. The battery monitoring kit is also called a BMK, which I'll call it that because it's a little bit easier to say. It all communicates through our Magnum inverter. So it's all Magnum brand. It all just kind of works together. We're going to go inside. I'm going to flip on some stuff and show you exactly how it works and how it shows us the amount of power that each device pulls. But before I do that, I'm going to flip off our solar so it doesn't mess up or affect any of our readings. This is my remote, which shows or displays the information that my BMK is reading. To access my BMK, I hit the meter button, click over, battery monitoring kit. You can see our batteries are at 93%. SOC means state of charge. That's the state of charge of our battery. 100% would be full, obviously. DC volts, yep. Uh, this one is saying we're using currently 21 amps out of the battery. So we're drawing 21 amps probably from the refrigerator and other miscellaneous vampire devices like the stereo or the TV that's just, you know, parasitic draw. We've used 50 amp hours out of the battery bank. And the next important one is 100% state of charge. It's been three days since we've hit 100%, and that's because we're here at a storage facility and we're not plugged in. That's it. All right. What next, boss? You gotta turn some stuff on. <laughs> Let's start with the device that almost everybody uses. Thank you, dear. Cell phones. Okay, charging. So I've unplugged it and now I'm going to plug it back in. Let's see if the number changes. 21.2, so it went up like 0.2 amps. Yeah. So Not a lot. No. Okay. Cell phones don't use a ton of power. Which is good. All right. Next, Next device. How about something heavy? Yeah, give me a hair dryer. There we go. Because if you live with a woman or even a man that likes to fix his hair, you might need a hair dryer. You ready? Ready. No, look at the numbers. Oh, but I want to see you turn it on. <sighs> okay, now pay attention. All right, 21. Go for it. 101. Okay. So blow drying your hair is going to cost you a little bit of power. That's why you get solar panels. Okay, next device, microwave? Microwave. Now because we don't actually use really our microwave. <laughs> a microwave, we have other fancy kitchen devices or not so fancy but ones I think are more efficient which hey I will link to that post maybe over here, maybe right, right there. That yeah, works. Yeah, 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 yeah right that there. works. Okay. Okay, so now we gotta plug this guy in. And which I'm gonna have to find it. I can't remember where it is. Maybe. There it is. Okay. This 
Okay. <laughs> this is actually the first time we've turned on the microwave. You better yeah. make sure nothing's in there. Really, no joke, we have not used the microwave at all in this motorhome. You, you better make sure nothing's in there just in case. <laughs> we used my, to keep our, uh, this is what we use as Tupperware storage. No, there's nothing in here. No metal, no nothing. N not even the little round plate. See? Okay. <laughs> we really don't use the microwave. It's not good to nuke. Oh, hello, microwave. Yes, thank you. Um, you really should pay attention to the numbers on this one because we probably shouldn't run this for very long without anything in there. Okay, hold on. All right, 21 amps. All right. Microwave on. Open, close door. Oh, sorry. I don't know how to use a microwave. Oh, that's not bad at all. Oh, there it is. 150. So that draws a little more power than the yeah. hairdryer. And that is not like on any specific power setting or anything else. I literally just hit 10 seconds and enter. So if you were using this on convection mode, it would use a little more energy. Um, also, if you were, um, you know, up to the power mode. So anyway, keep that in mind. Okay, that's enough, yeah. That's enough, or how about the fan and the heater? Okay. It's way back there. Thing is actually pretty awesome. Saved us a lot of times, especially from being cold. It is a heater and a fan. Yes. So. Ooh, and real dusty since it's been sitting here. Don't pay attention to that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna watch the BMK. Yes. It is currently off. We're at 21 amps. Okay. Turning on. This is the fan full yes. blast. And yes, it's now on 10, which is full blast. All right. 22 and a half. Okay, so so only one and a half amps. Yeah. And that's for fan mode on full blast. Now I'm going to turn the temperature over to heat. So pay attention there. Going all the way up to 99 degrees. All right. Now the heater's kicking on. It's 45 amps. Turning on the heater in Florida is probably not the smartest idea. <laughs> no. 95, 100, still ramping up the heater, but you can oh, tell yeah. it's a really soft start, which is nice. Yeah, it's really nice. Is it on full blast on the fan? Ah, uh, yeah. We're all the way up to 10 and it's on full heat. I've set the temperature to 99 and it's cooking. All right. I'm sweating. It's 120 amps. Okay, so not too bad. You can see that you can run a heater or a hair dryer or a microwave for all similar power. Mm. Oh. I wonder if it changed today. It just kicked into high gear. 130. Still similar, but yeah. I guess it finally got to temperature. Yeah, and remember, 20 amps are being pulled by the fridge and the freezer. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm going to turn that off because it's plenty warm. Okay, we've only drawn 57 amp hours out of our battery bank. Now remember it was at 50 when we started. Because we ran those devices only for a few seconds, we only took about 7 amp hours out of the batteries. So this is where the math comes in. If you run something that draws 100 amp hours for an entire hour, then you're going to draw down your battery bank 100 amp hours. So that's kind of easy math if you think about it and you write it down you really keep track of the devices that you use the devices you want to use off your battery bank and that's kind of how we decided how much battery power we needed how much lithium battery power we needed how much solar power we needed to compensate which reminds me i'm going to turn the solar back on and i'm going to do one more test yay tests then you're like an angel appearing out of the light <laughs> the solar Turn me into an angel. <laughs> All right, now let's see. Now that the solar is on, our BMK should show. Now we're bringing in 21 amps. Our solar is bringing in about 40 amps, but our fridge is taking out about 20 amps. So that leaves 20 amps going into the battery bank. So what does all that mean? It means we're down 50 amp hours from our battery bank. We're putting in 20 amps from the solar. 
we will be fully charged in about two hours. Well, SOC 100%, stay at a charge. Yes. Except for the fact that we were down 57, uh, but you know. You know, who's, we'll, who's keeping track? Yeah, everybody at home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't read my math. Just, it's a, it's an assumption. It's close. You get the idea. Yeah. It all may seem a little foreign and like Greek right now, but... Once you get used to using it and once you get to understand the devices that you're using and how much solar you have coming in, if you have solar at all, it really does become second nature. Yeah, and the big thing is you can get one of these before you ever invest in extra batteries or extra solar yeah. and figure out how much power are you really using, so how much solar and extra battery power do you need? That yeah. way you're not spending money. Yeah, a couple hundred bucks you can have a BMK installed and right. and then start monitoring, save yourself a few thousand dollars and who knows. Yeah. The big thing is too is also that it can save your batteries because it's really important to understand how much power is left in them. Yeah, especially with a typical battery bank that comes in an RV, it's not enough battery power and you'll blow through it like that. And once it's dead, once you kill those batteries, you really hurt the life cycle. Yes, and taking them below 50%, that's the big deal. So many people end up dropping them down to... Oh, almost dead, I mean. Yeah, and it's very bad. And you do that with lithium, you kill them <laughs> once, they and never come forever. back. Yeah. Yeah, at least that's what we're told. We haven't killed ours ourselves, so... We have no intentions yeah. of testing that. <laughs> no, no, we will outline a few more things on the website somewhere around here. Um, if you want to click over and read a little bit more detail, and we'll correct anything that we've screwed up or yeah. gotten wrong in this video. So. <laughs> Lord knows, I probably said something wrong. <laughs> anyway. All right, that's back it. to moving. Yeah. <laughs> See you on Bye. the water. Beer time? Beer time. <laughs> yeah, I guess we should finish. No, soda. Beer soda? Soda. They make those now.